I fell for the nerd. I'm Aaron, and I'm 17 years old. I'm a jock. I play football, and I'm also the most popular guy in school. I'm also pretty good looking, according to my peers, but I think they have to say that since I'm popular. I had everything that I wanted, a perfect life. At home, my mother and my father were two of the most loving people that I knew. I was adored by all the community members. I did not lack anything in my life. I always got whichever girl that I wanted. I should have been happy, but I was not. That is the thing about humans. We are never satisfied despite how much we want to be. Even if things are going well in our lives, there's always something that happens that messes everything up. For me, it was sudden depression. I felt as if I was not being my true self. Everyone loved me. They assumed that I was always happy, but I could not tell anyone my problems. I was the one who fixed other people's problems and never complained about my own. My grades were okay. I was holding on. I got by because I was an athlete, so they were not really important to me. But the depression was taking a toll on me. I was having sleepless nights, worrying about who I really was. Not the perfect homecoming king that everyone loved. No. I wish that there was something more to me other than that. The insomnia started to affect me in a terrible way. The thoughts kept me up. When I closed my eyes, all I saw was darkness and a million thoughts that danced in my mind. I wanted to break away from the image of the perfect guy. People were starting to drain the life out of me. That was when my grades started to suffer. Lack of sleep made me sleep in class. Add the numerous hours that I spent training and you had a dead man walking. Soon enough, I was being called back by teachers. There was a meeting with my parents and then the threat by my coach to throw me off the team. My principal, who was one of the kindest women that I knew, called me in one day. She told me that my issue puzzled her and she could see something was wrong. So then she decided to send me to the school psychologist and have me evaluated. And then a tutor would help me catch up on my work. I was desperate for any sort of help. I agreed. I had counseling for about a month. It helped a lot and I managed to unpack a lot of things that were bothering me. Our generation is a broken one. We are plagued with constant comparisons to celebrities we are not. We are bombarded with information every day and still expected to manage. Digital depression is real. Then the time came for me to meet my new tutor. From what I heard, he was top in my grade and in line for a highly coveted scholarship. Basically, a nerd. I had nothing against nerds. I was just wired to look down on them. The old cliche that jocks were better than nerds applied here. He entered the office carrying a very full backpack. He looked like he was going to fall. He had the classic nerdy look, glasses and pale skin that looked like he had not gone out in weeks, and shock of red hair. Wait, I knew this kid. I had seen him around before, but I never paid much attention to him. I expected him to be shy and timid, but as soon as he spoke, he was none of those things. He spoke as if he was sure of himself. That surprised me. I had to stop relying on stupid movies that were infested with cliches. Good morning, Principal. Is this the subject in question? He turned to look at me. Good morning, Evan. Yes, this is Aaron. He is the young man that I told you about, who needs your help with schoolwork, Miss Fowler said. Right. You can come with me, he said. His eyes. They were a clear blue and piercing. He was sure of himself. I could tell from the look in his eyes. Sure, dude, I said as I got up to follow him. For someone who was carrying what seemed to be a million books, he was fast. Where are we going? I ran to catch up with him. The library. Your new best friend. He looked at me and chuckled. I was taken aback. I was expecting him to be colder or timid, not nice. I guess I was wrong about him on all counts. I just did not have much experience with nerds. I was constantly surrounded by my teammates and popular girls. The social hierarchy at our school meant that there was no reason to talk to the less popular kids. I guess so, I laughed. This was my first time entering the school library. I had been at the school for several years, but not once did I feel the urge to go to the library. I was not into books. Now, if we were speaking about the gym, that is another story altogether. We took out our textbooks and got to work. I had to say, Evan was good at what he did. He explained things to me in a way that was interesting and engaging. I actually began to understand what was going on in my subjects. He was also really nice, but strict nonetheless. We kept to a timetable and I would get hell if I flaked on him. In between all the studying, I got to know who he was as a person. He was determined, smart, and nice. He was not a pushover or a stereotype. He was just Evan. So we became friends, as unlikely as the pairing as we were. 
But the thing was that I could not let anyone know about our friendship. I did not want us to be given a hard time. I'm sure you know how mean teenagers can be. I know what we did was wrong, but I did not want my two lives to coexist. On the other hand, I was one of the popular guys in school, and I could get any girl that I wanted. The problem was that I did not connect on a deeper level with any of those girls. Looking back, I noticed that some of those relationships were shallow, putting up a front because I wanted to fit in while simultaneously drowning in the depression. When I was alone at night, I hated it. I was comforted by the thoughts that I suppressed during the day. This was not who I wanted to be as a person. But he is unapologetic about who he was. I would spend hours with him and feel more alive than I had all week. We started to hang out outside of tutoring lessons. I would hang out at his house on Saturdays while he built toy planes out of a few pieces of metal and plastic. I never understood when he explained it to me, but he let me fly them. He was really smart, knew about everything except for sports. Luckily for him, I was there to show him the ropes. I would lie to my other friends and make excuses just to spend time with him. Eventually, my grades improved and my insomnia started to get better. This meant that our sessions had to stop. I was really sad about it. He had been my escape from this crazy world and now I would have to go back to being the person I was before. I will miss these sessions, I said as I packed up my books. We could continue hanging out outside of school, he suggested. Of course, I will not be able to as much though. The season's starting up and there are a lot of games in the following weeks, I explained. No pressure, my dude. You're not my only friend or anything, he sighed. Of course I'm not. You've got Leroy, I laughed. Leroy was his teddy bear. Believe it or not, Evan loved teddy bears. When I had seen him in his room, I had nearly died of laughter. I was not okay after that conversation. I felt as if there was something left unsaid between us. It was complicated, but I felt a certain way when I was around him. It was a feeling like peace. Who knows why I felt that way when we had known each other for only a few weeks. So then, life carried on. I got so busy that I could not keep my promises. I bailed on him multiple times, but he kept on trying. One day, I was having lunch with my friends in the cafeteria. Just then, I saw him coming towards me. You've been avoiding me, so I thought that I would come to you, he said. Ew, what's wrong with you, Kathy, the girl that I was with at the time, said to him. Aaron, he said. I avoided his intense gaze. I did not know what to say. Yo, Aaron. I did not know that you took up donating to charity, Mark said. Guys, it's nothing. Just a misunderstanding, I said. A misunderstanding? Wow, dude. I thought we were friends. Should have never given you the benefit of the doubt. You used me. I did not, I started. He turned on his heel and walked away. Your tutor got attached. Nerds are so pathetic, man, Mark said. His words enraged me. I felt my heart breaking as he walked away from me. He was not just a nerd, he was a human being, and I had treated him in a shitty manner. I knew I was avoiding him. I did not want him around because he'd made me feel so much. I was afraid of what that could mean. Was it a crush? Or just infatuation? I could have sworn I was straight once upon a time, but I was not so sure anymore. I was a long way from figuring out my feelings, but I could not deny that there was something there. Stop, I said harshly. Mark's eyes widened in shock. Since when are you friends with the nerds? Kathy said, smirking. I was tired of her. She was fake and she was not who I wanted. I had no idea who I wanted. It was insane. Gosh, can you be nice to someone for once in your life? I'm done with you. I got up and left the table. I tried sending several text messages to Evan, but he read all of them, but did not reply. I hoped that it would not be too late for us. I wanted to figure out the attraction that was between us. Weeks went by and he did not speak to me. He would tell me that he was busy whenever I asked him if we could talk. He was so cold, unlike how he had been a few weeks ago. I had messed up and I had lost a lot, all in the pursuit of popularity, which was not even worth it. When I saw his bright red hair, my heart pounded as I thought of how much I needed him. He had been my anchor to this world when I was at my lowest. I had some feelings for him that he had no idea about. I quickly resigned myself to the fact that I was never going to express how I felt about him. He was openly gay, and I was closeted. There were chances that he would not like me at all. Then the angel smiled down upon me one day. Mr. Smith, the science teacher, asked Evan and I to stay over to help him clean up after the lesson. I was going to talk to him even if he did not want to talk to me. I'll be back. I need to fetch something from the office. When you are done, you can leave. Thank you for doing this for me, he said as he left. 
We were silent for a while. I opened my mouth to say something, anything, but I was at a loss for words. Now that he was in front of me, all the words had disappeared from my mind. Hi, I tested the waters. Hi, he said curtly. How are you doing? I asked. Fine, he said dismissively. I deserved that. I had been a fool. Just okay? I prodded further. Oh, now you care? His voice was icy. He turned to look at me. He might as well have punched me with the look of hurt in his eyes. I do care about you. You're my friend, I said. When the popular kids are not around, right? Even then. I'm so sorry about how I treated you on that day. You could have said that you were ashamed of me from the beginning. I could have still tutored you, but I would not have let you in. But I want to be in your life, I raised my voice. This is not going the way that I had wanted to. No, you do not. Go back to your life and stop playing with me. He poked me on the chest. He was visibly upset. And pretend that I never met you, I shouted back. It would be the best, he said. No, no, I could not let it end like this. I could not let go of the one who had made me feel like I was real for once in my life. I could not go back to feeling like I was an empty shell. Not when you rekindled me. Heaps of ash that I was, I quoted. At least something good came out of those lessons, he laughed. For a second, I caught sight of him. I was tired of wasting time. I was wasting away here in front of him. So I took a leap of faith and I kissed him. He gasped, but he did not back away. We slowly kissed each other, and I felt everything become right again. This was what I had been missing. This was who I had been missing. All along. I wanted to stay there. Freeze that moment and frame it. I wanted those silky lips to be upon mine for as long as it was humanely possible. Then we pulled away from each other. For a second, our foreheads were connected and we were just standing at each other. No words were required. I knew what he was saying to me. My whole life, I had thought that I would find validation in being admired by everyone. I had played sports, my first love, with the hope that if I did enough, I would be immortalized. I would always love sports, but having someone who saw you at your worst, who endured your post-game depression, made it so much better. I was no longer afraid. I was not afraid to hide my happiness. I was still young. I had a lot of issues, but letting my true self be seen by everyone made life a whole lot better. We started exclusively dating about a month after our first kiss. We decided to take things slow. We did not hide it from anyone at school. I eventually found the courage to tell my parents about my sexuality about three months after we started dating. They were confused about a few things, but they accepted me. I did not become a social pariah as I had thought at school. We were in a different era, an era where the norms that had guided us were being discarded. I did not care too much about being popular anymore. I continued to play football because I would always love it. He and I grew from strength to strength. Things are not perfect always. They never are in a relationship. Sometimes we would fight and not speak for days. Sometimes one of us would go through something devastating and the other would have to be the pillar of strength. Soon we were going to be graduating together. I'm nervous about starting college. It is a whole new world compared to high school. Lucky for me, his college is not too far from mine. So we can visit each other and he can bore me to death with his scientific facts at any time he wishes to. But I love him nonetheless, my little nerd. Looks and status are not everything. You could fall in love with anyone in the world. The world is full of so many people who will fall in love with you. You do not get to choose who are you going to fall in love with. It could be your enemy, your best friend, a stranger you bump into on the street, etc. Labels mean absolutely nothing. Those are man-made, as Evan likes to tell me. Love is something that is beyond the scope of our imagination. The perks of dating a smart person. I get to learn how to sound smart, and I get to force him out of his room and get some vitamin D. Speaking of, we are at a sleepover, and he's calling for me. Ask me what is keeping me so long on the computer. Gonna have to go and give my boo some attention, I guess. Before he starts throwing a tantrum. My love can be so dramatic at times. I cannot deal. Gotta go. Catch you on the flip side. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.